for about uh, almost four years now. Uh, today I'll be presenting uh, Java modules. Uh, we should uh, be able to fit in about 60 minutes. Uh, please feel free to ask questions, to interrupt me. And uh, let's get uh, through the agenda. Um, uh, we are going to look at uh, what initially motivated the need for the Java module system. Uh, it was presented initially in Java 9. It was actually planned for Java 8, but it was uh, delayed some time because uh, it took the Oracle team a really longer time than anticipated uh, to release it. Uh, we are also going to look at uh, what is a Java module, how modules work among themselves, in or in other words, how modules uh, specify their dependencies. Uh, then we will discuss uh, the concept of a module graph. Uh, this is uh, actually a very important concept to understand since, since uh, it is not only uh, show you implicit and explicit uh, dependencies, but uh, it is also what uh, Java uses uh, to resolve or determine exactly what modules are necessary for uh, our application or uh, some library. Uh, at the end, I'll make a small demo uh, where I will migrate a non-modular code uh, that uses an external library uh, to a modular one. So usually we're uh, developing our applications by uh, starting with the Java development kit. We create some classes or interfaces and uh, we place them in packages. Uh, then we convert these packages into jar files and we add some libraries that uh, make our own code uh, possible to work. Then we put all these elements um, on the class path and uh, actually that's it, we're good to go after that. Uh, however, um, big applications can have uh, hundreds of jar files and uh, when this happens, uh, we usually have some unexpected problems. Uh, this is sometimes referred as uh, Java hill, or uh, it could be said as a class path hill. There are uh, some problems uh, that are possible to happen uh, here. If any of you have been in uh, Java hill or at some point you will, uh, it's not very fun place. And uh, it's really hard to get your application back to good and uh, sane state. Uh, so why is the jar here occurring? Uh, one reason is that uh, jar files cannot uh, define uh, their own dependencies. Uh, as we know, they are just uh, zip files with some metadata in it. Uh, so. Uh, if you you may have a jar file on the class path and it's possible for that jar file to require some other jar file to work. Uh, however, this file uh, could happen to not be on the class path anymore. Uh, so this initially is not a problem, but uh, at some point uh, when we uh, when this uh, class uses a method uh, from the non-existing jar file, we can we are going to face a non-class they found error and this is going to happen on runtime and our application is going to crash um, this is because the runtime system does not detect missing dependencies until it tries to access them uh, not being able to express dependencies can grow into a much uh, big problem when we have transitive dependencies Sometimes different jar files contain classes uh, with the same fully qualified name. Um, this uh, can happen in several cases, but uh, most commonly uh, when you have two libraries using the same library, but uh, each of these libraries is using a different version of the uh, already mentioned library. Uh, this is called shadowing. And uh, if this happens, 
uh, the classes will be loaded uh, are those who have been seen first in the class path, which means that uh, some part or major part of our application is not going to work as expected. Uh, this can be a huge problem uh, when uh, you have multiple versions of the same library. Uh, runtime errors can occur, and uh, these are basically really hard to um, be found and to get diagno diagnosed. Uh, the no class default error happens in runtime, and it simply means that uh, a class uh, that your code depends on was present at compile time, but uh, it cannot be found on, on uh, runtime. Something more about uh, the motivation. Um, the Java platform module system uh, is uh, the fact that the JDK and the uh, Java runtime environment are monolithic and very large. This is happening uh, until Java 8, of course. Uh, this results in very large applications because uh, we have to carry that large uh, GRE uh, with our programs. Uh, this uh, could not seem like a big issue to us because nowadays we have a lot of storage and uh, hardware is constantly getting uh, better and better. Uh, but uh, there are other cases like the IoT devices. Uh, these are like small sensors or gadgets or appliances. Uh, and uh, these devices may have limited resources and uh, a big uh, GRE is uh, not something that is well, well suited for them. Uh, money is also an issue. Uh, the storage is usually cheap, but it's not free. Uh, IoT manufacturers can provide much more affordable devices if they didn't have to provide resources uh, necessary to run very large programs. Um, the smaller the application footprint, the better. Um, from IoT to cloud to microservices, uh, we always want uh, the runtime image to be as small as possible. Uh, JDK 8 uh, began to address this problem with uh, its three compact profiles of the Java runtime environment. This was uh, actually a pretty good start back in the days, but uh, we need something uh, better for our applications. Uh, so uh, the idea for the module system and uh, its goals uh, first start with a reliable configuration. We always want to be able to explicitly express dependencies uh, so that uh, we don't get into the situation where we have resources being called and they are not in the class path. Uh, if jars are missing from the class path, then we would like to know immediately uh, when this uh, when this happens. Secondly, and some of the uh, most important reason is uh, the strong encapsulation. Uh, until Java 8, everything uh, public on the class path is available to everything else. Uh, there is no practical way to specify uh, that only certain packages in a uh, jar file should be visible to others and the rest should not be. Uh, third, a scalable Java platform. Uh, sometimes we don't want to uh, scale up, we, we want to scale down. Uh, this allows this allows us to selectively include uh, uh, only the modules of our application uh, instead of uh, caring about uh, three or four thousand classes. Sometimes our application might need only five or ten of them. Um, next, we have a greater platform integrity. Um, by using strong encapsulation, the Java platform can prevent access to internal APIs that uh, most of the time are not met uh, for public use. Uh, this makes it much easier for developers to extend the Java platform. Uh, 
And finally, along with the topics above, you can see that a modular system with strong encapsulation and greater platform integrity will lead to programs that are easier to build and to maintain. So what is a module? Uh, when uh, developing uh, Java applications, uh, we usually just create methods and fields. Uh, then we group them together as a class or a interface probably. Uh, we define this logical set of classes and group them into packages. We create uh, jar files from the packages and uh, we distribute them as libraries or our applications. Uh, Java module system is adding a new level of encapsulation. It's called a module. Uh, Jar files are just collection of packages, but they don't provide any mechanism to control access to these packages. Everything uh, public in a jar file is public is uh, public to everything else. Uh, they cannot define any dependencies. Contrary, Java 9 is adding mechanisms to the module that allow us to define exactly uh, what it needs and uh, what it provides and these mechanisms are strictly enforced at every level. Also, in addition to packages, uh, models, for instance, uh, can, can contain data. This can be configuration files, our native code, and some other resources. Uh, how do we declare a module? Uh, first, uh, we start with the packages that we want to group together. Uh, then we create a single Java file. Uh, it's named uh, model, uh, module-info.java. And uh, basically that's it. Now our code is using the Java 9 module system. Uh, let's look at, the, at this directory structure here. Uh, notice that uh, with the mod, or the structure with modules, uh, have a new directories as a parent. These are the red arrows on the picture. Uh, the content of uh, this uh, directory represents the packages that we are including in the module. Uh, in this case, the module contains the packages uh, com example model and com example YouTube. Uh, next, we're just adding the module in dash info dot Java file and at the root package, which is pretty important because the root package is uh, descriptive about the module. Uh, the name of the module is really depending on us, but uh, it's something like a, a rule of thumb that uh, the module has the same name as the main packages. Uh, different module types. We have a system module. Uh, these are the modules uh, listed when we run the list module, list modules command. They include the Java standard edition and uh, JDK modules. We have also application modules. Uh, these are what we usually want to build when we decide to use modules. They are named and defined in the uh, compiled module dash info.class file. And, uh, and are included in the jar file. Uh, we also have automatic module. Uh, this will relate later to my demo, so this is kind of important here. Uh, we are able to input unofficial modules by just adding jar files to the module path. Um, the name of the module will be derived from the name of the jar. Um, for example, if we have a jar uh, with name json dash 2.8 uh, jar the module name of uh, uh, will be just uh, json uh, the version and the file extension will be stripped out of the name of the module uh, automatic modules uh, have full read access uh, to every other module on the path uh, which is sometimes we don't want that but since it's an automatic module uh, that's how it goes. And we also have the unnamed module. When a class or a jar is loaded into the class path, 
but uh, not in the module path. It's automatically added to the native module. Uh, this model basically catches up uh, everything to maintain backward compatibility with uh, the previously written source code. So in order to be part of the module system, we basically have to create a new directory, put our packages in there, and then just add the model dash info.java file. And this file declares the module and provides uh, directives that define the dependencies of the module. Uh, there are some restricted keywords, uh, which are called module directives. Um, It's uh, a model can uh, use them to uh, say what other modules does this model require. This is about the requires directive. Uh, also, which of my packages will I export so that other modules can use them? What services do I implement that other modules can use? What services I use from other modules? And regarding reflection, uh, do I want to open modules and to allow reflective access to my module packages? Um, I will go one more time on the module directives just to be a bit a little bit more specific. Uh, the requires directive indicates that uh, this module depends on another module. It has also two additional uh, variants. The requires transitive, which is followed by the module name. Uh, this means that any module that uh, reads uh, this one implicitly also reads the transitive module. For example, if your module contains a method which is uh, publicly, available, publicly available and returns a type of another module. When transitive is not used, any module reading this module would explicitly have to add their dependencies. Also required static. This is the this is an optional dependency. The module is needed at compile time, but it's not uh, needed at, at runtime. Uh, exports. This directive indicates which public types of the modules packages are acceptable to other modules. We also have exports too. Uh, after the two keyword, it's possible to set a list of packages that are allowed uh, to use the exported ones. Opens, this directive also indicates which public types of the modules packages are accessible to other modules. The difference between that and the export is that opens is not for compile time, it's only for runtime, while export is for both. Uh, the opens directive can typically be used when you want to allow other models to use reflection for the types of the specific packages. Uh, this will be highlighted in the demo afterwards too. Uh, just like exports, opens also has opens too in order to limit the accessibility of the package. Sometimes we just want to open our module to uh, a specific package. And finally, provides with. Uh, it indicates that the module provides a service implementation. Uh, the module is therefore a service provider. Um, after the provides, uh, follows an interface or abstract class. And after the with uh, is the implementation class of this interface. Uh, modular JDK, um, why is uh, the module path better than the class path? Firstly, uh, the class path can get in trouble when multiple class path elements contain the same package. Also, the class path is searched linearly every time a new class is requested, which basically swallows our application. Uh, differently, the module path uh, forms a partition of packages. Uh, no package can be in more than one runtime module. Uh, also, modules perform a direct search. Once the runtime finds a module, 
it remembers that and no additional searches initiated. Uh, pass loading because big O of one, it's not big O of, of N, which is a pretty uh, nice optimization when we have a lot of packages and big monolithic applications. Um, here, for, for example, we have a visualization uh, which displays the logic uh, of breaking the runtime jar into modules. Uh, you can uh, try to imagine how much difficult is that for uh, implementation. Uh, and uh, this is actually a visualization of a module graph. Speaking of which, uh, I'll make a small example. Uh, in this example, we have two modules, com example CLI and com example model. Um, the CLI depends not only on the model, but it also depends on Java SQL, which on the, itself depends on Java XML. The model also depends on logging, and they all depend on Java.base uh, because every model does either explicitly or implicitly. They are all dependent on Java.base. Um, the model graphs uh, can get really large and complex, but uh, the module system can easily build a module graph from the module specifications. I will also be showing this in the demo shortly. And uh, then it can resolve all the modules needed for the application. Uh, first, the module path contains modules. Then there is one module where we start. It's called the root module. We start the root module and add dependencies as we see them. If we have already added some dependency, we don't have to add it again. When we have the module graph, we can use it to check for correctness and we can have a reliable configuration this way. Some of the basic rules enforced by the system, it can make sure that all modules are available. For example, if a module is missing when we run the application, we get the error immediately, which is a pretty uh, nice improvement. Uh, it can get also make sure that uh, there are no cycles in the graph. If cycle exists, we also will get an error message. Uh, it can make sure that there are no duplicate modules and also generates an error. It can check to make sure that all packages names and modules are unique. And this way it avoids the jar hell. Uh, what's really powerful is that the module graph can be used at compile time, link time, and runtime. So basically, I will now uh, go to our demo. We're good with time. Uh, if you have any questions, maybe now or later. Uh, so for now, I'll be closing this. And I will show you um, the Explorer content of uh, my demo. It's just three folders. I have one jar file in lib, one output directory, which is completely empty. And we have a source directory, which only contains three Java uh, files. I will be opening that in one text editor uh, called Visual Studio. Um, this is just for readability uh, instances. So we have our JSON library. Uh, we have one address Java class, which is something pretty simple. We have uh, address which has street, city, state, constructor, getter, getters and setters, nothing else. Please notice the uh, annotations here. We know that uh, when we have annotations, we are basically dealing with reflection. We also have a person class, uh, again, using uh, the JSON library. Uh, and uh, our person has ID, name, age, and it also has a list of addresses. Uh, it uh, is all going to be run the, by our main class, which, uh, which is pretty simple. 
it imports everything from the JSON library. And we create two persons, uh, add some addresses to them, and then we use the JSON library to generate uh, JSON, which is going to be printed out on the console. So uh, this uh, uh, this configuration right here is not using any tools, it's just plain code. Uh, I will try to run this to see how uh, the application is uh, going to work without any modules. And then step-by-step, step, we will migrate to a mod modular to a module system. Firstly, I will run uh, jdeps command for uh, dependencies with uh, summary and oops and I'll be checking our JSON jar. Now we can see that uh, JSON depends on Java base and it also is depending on Java SQL. Also, uh, let's compile let's compile our Java files. Uh, uh, Java compile, I believe most of you are pretty aware with uh, these commands. I'll be only using uh, uh, command line for uh, this demo uh, because uh, most of the development environments are providing uh, most of the builds and compiling by default. But I think this way will be uh, more un understandable. So I'm providing the class path, uh, which will be our JSON jar. I am setting the output directory, which is our out folder. And here I will use one command to find all files in the source directory, which have name that uh, contains, that has Java. Uh, uh, format. Uh, you can see that our out directory is right now empty. And we have clean compile with our class files. Okay, now let's make a jar. Uh, jar, uh, create file. I want the file to be in the lib folder along with the JSON and the class path. Uh, I'm uh, I will name this file Java modules dot jar, and I want everything to be compiled from the output directory. And we have our jar file now. Um, we can uh, see the file, and uh, let's have a look at it. I will use the tf command to check our java modules jar we have our manifest file and everything uh, that we needed so uh, let's try to run this to see the output of our of our program i'm sorry So Java on the class path, I will put everything we have, which is the JSON jar and our new compile, our new created Java model jar. And I also provide the main class, which is used to run the application. It's in these packages and it's called main. And as expected, this is the output of our program, which is uh, not using any modules right now. Uh, now what we're going to do, we're going to take this JSON jar and I'm, I'm going to move it from the class path to the module path. And this will create uh, the automatic module, which I mentioned a little bit earlier. For this reason, I will create one folder and we'll name it mods. Uh, I will also delete our jar and 
I will also delete everything from the output directory. And I'm going to move this file here. Yes, I want to move that. And actually we don't need the lip folder anymore. I'm just going to delete that. So uh, let's try to compile our source code, our source code not into a I will clear the terminal and we are going again with Java compile. This time I am adding the module, the module path, which is mods. I am setting again the output directory to out and I'll be using the same command to find all files in source, which has ex Java extension. And let's see what happens now. We have some, a lot of errors, which uh, is basically a very good thing. Uh, these errors are pretty descript descriptive, uh, as we can see. Package is on the module graph. <clears throat> I'm sorry, but it is uh, not visible. And we see that uh, JSON is declared, but it's not in the module graph and some other things like that. Uh, so uh, what can we do? We can add uh, uh, we can add the modules and I'll be using the same command, but uh, this time I will just add here, add modules, JSON. Since the JSON is in our module path right now, as I mentioned, uh, JSON is the name of our module since it's an automatic module. Let's try to run this again. And we have a clean compile. Now let's uh, uh, create let's create our jar file the same way as uh, we did before. Jar uh, create file into the library. No, it will be into the mods library is already deleted and we're gonna name again java models the jar <clears throat> and i want everything to be compiled from the output directory we have the file now uh, now let's try to run our application uh, now we have a module path a class path and we also need to add the JSON module the same way we added it to runtime while compiling. And finally, we will add our main class. So this is going to look like Java module path, which is mods, um, class path. I'm using the full command now. The class path uh, contains Oh, actually, I need that folder. Yeah, I was not. I I made a small error. Now, when thinking about it, uh, I'm going to need the lib folder because it represents our class path right now. I will be deleting it in the next demo, and I will also uh, return the. Sorry. I will return our Java module jar on the class path since we only have one automatic module which complains which contains the JSON module. Our source code is still on the class path. And I will add it as 
Lips Java modules. And finally, adding this module. Which is JSON and our main class clean compile. It's something like a hybrid application right now. We have the JSON to an automatic module, but our class, our source code is in the class part. Um, let's try to use the JDEPS uh, to check our uh, Java modules jar, which are still on the class path. I will clear the uh, console. So JDEPS again, summary, and check our jar file. As you can see, uh, our uh, Jar is depending on Java base, but we also have not found module. This is because JSON is in the automatic module. I guess I'm speaking too much. So uh, we want to see, uh, we want to find what is not found. And basically, uh, we can add the uh, module graph, the JSON module to the module graph in our command, which will be uh, jdeps at module JSON. Somewhere again, and we're going to add the module path also. Uh, which is mods, and I want to check our Java module jar. And I have made a typo, which is add modules. Now we can see that JSON depends on Java base and Java SQL, and that our compiled code is depending on JSON and on Java base. Uh, now we have the source code on the class path. We have the JSON library on the module path. Next thing what I'm going to do is to try to uh, put our source code into modules and put this code into the module path along with the automatic JSON module. So at this point, we will now have nothing on the class path. Uh, for uh, time saving purposes, I will close um, this folder and I will open a new one, which is somewhere here. This one. I will also open a terminal, which is going to be this one. Uh, so what is different in our code right now? Uh, the mods uh, directory still contains the JSON jar. We have nothing in the output directory. And our source code is a little bit different. As I mentioned, uh, how do we create a module? First, we are creating a new package, the root package. Probably it's going to be better to visualize this using the tree command. I will put that for the source folder. I have added the main package on top of the main file, which also have a model info.java file, which is just an empty file, module main, and nothing in it. The same goes uh, for modules, for modules, as this will be our second uh, mod, uh, module, 
and it also has empty uh, Java info file. I have also added uh, a compile sh file since I'll be compiling uh, several times now. Uh, I have the same command that I used before uh, with uh, adding the module path to mods uh, and uh, the source path as it is. Uh, so let's try to to compile this. We have lots of errors, but again, there is pretty good because they're very descriptive. We can see that uh, uh, our module uh, models is declared in, uh, but module main does not read it. Also, we have the same going on for JSON. And basically we have not added any uh, directives to our module paths. So uh, what we're going to do now, uh, we're going to start with the main uh, module dash info dot Java file. Uh, since our file, as we know, is using JSON, JSON library, and it is also using our person and address models. Uh, what are we going to add? We know that it requires JSON, and we also know that it requires models. Uh, our models, uh, we know that they also require JSON because uh, we have annotations there. So we're going to put requires JSON. And uh, let's try to compile that again. Some improvement. Uh, but uh, what is happening here? Uh, Java modules is declared into the modules module, which does not export it. This is pretty descriptive. So what we need to do, we need to export that. So exports models dot software dot Java models. And let's try one more time. And I possibly have a typo somewhere. You, uh, Java modules, you type it Java, Java models. Oh, you mean, oh yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> I hope we have it now. Our output directory is empty. Probably not. You may see Java module left. Yeah. Oops. 
Okay, we now have our source code comp compiled. And let's try to build and run this too. Um, I also created uh, SH scripts uh, for building uh, the main jar and also for building uh, the model jar. I'm just going to code them. Build main SH and build models SH and try to run this. I have also a script for that. I'm just uh, Java adding mods to the module path and our mo module and our main class. And we have something very interesting here, as we can see. Uh, Java one, no class def found error, which I mentioned earlier. And we see Java SQL. Now, where does that came from? If you remember in the start of the demo, uh, when I used JDEP's summary on our, on the JSON jar, we saw that it does requires uh, Java SQL. Uh, so uh, what we can do here, we can just add it to the run script. And uh, I will just add it over here, add modules, Java SQL, save that, and try one more time. Another application, it, which is getting interesting. As you can see, we have the reflect issue we all know what that uh, when we have annotations uh, we're dealing with uh, reflection and uh, as mentioned in the presentation we can use the open directive to allow our modules to be used by other models for reflection and it's basically is saying that uh, the models module does not opens uh, so we are going to the modules module dash info dot java and what thing we can do we can just set open module and uh, since our source code changes uh, we will need to make uh, new compile so i will just delete everything from here i'm going to run the compile command uh, then build main build models we have our jars and we can try to run it as expected. Um, what we have now, uh, we have opened the whole module for reflection. Sometimes we don't, don't want this to happen. Uh, we probably just want to open for reflection to, for a, to, a certain, to a certain module. What we, how can we do that? Uh, I will use opens to directive which was mentioned earlier over here i'm just going to do that i will open uh, i opens the models dot soft surf dot java modules to the json module and i will try Compile, build, and run again. Compile. 
Build me. Build models. And we have our application. Uh, no classpad used at all. We have automatic module for the JSON library. And we created our modules for the main and the models module. And uh, basically that's uh, all. Um, now I will show you how uh, we can have a full configuration to our application, uh, which means that I will take the JSON jar out uh, of the automatic module and I will try to make a module out of it. Uh, for this purpose. Uh, did I delete everything from source? Yeah. Uh, for this purpose, I have uh, downloaded the, J the JSON source code from uh, GitHub. And I will just copy that to our folder and I deleted everything from the source folder by mistake one minute ago and I will take it from here. Okay, so let's just check it up. What does this have? Okay. Yeah, it's the same as just a minute ago. Uh, so uh, I will use uh, JDEPS again with a new command, uh, which is very useful, the generate module info command to generate our module info.java file. And I will use the uh, JSON jar for that. So JDIPS generate module info. And I want to generate it into the JSON source, JSON. Maybe I could show you a little bit. Yeah, actually, there is already a file here. I'm going to delete that. Um, I'm on the job folder. I hope I'm not deleting anything more than I should be. Uh, JSON source. Main Java, I want to place the file there, and I'm going to generate it for the JSON jar. So let's see if we have it now. Yeah, here it is. Uh, let's have a look at that. Uh, it exports JSON, JSON annotations, reflect, stream, and we notice that there are some internal package here, which is probably meant that from the developers that uh, this should not be used for, this should not be open to external use. I will, co I will comment these three lines here. And if you have some problems, I can go back from that. So uh, we have now our module info.java class for the module which we're going to create. And I don't need the, the JSON jar file anymore. Actually, I don't need anything from the mods folder. And I will also empty the output directory. We have only our source code and the source code of the JSON library, which has the 
Model Info dot Java class in it. Now let's try to compile and build the JSON jar. I have added uh, two scripts again. One is compile JSON. I'm adding the source path uh, JSON source through the Java folder, output directory, and the same command, but this time into the JSON source main Java folder. Uh, so, file json.sh and we should have yes we do have it compiled class file here so uh, now let's also uh, build the json jar the same as the other nothing uh, different from here and we have our jar now i'm also going to compile our source code into the our directory and build the jars and that's it we have jars from our three modules which are completely configured and let's try to run this with the same command and voila we have complete completely modular modularized application with a good uh, encapsulation and a good configuration and finally i want to show you just one more thing for the last minute we have i will create another folder here which is called dots and i'm going to use jdeps again uh, adding the module path which is mods i'm also putting the recursive command to search through everything in this directory and i'm setting output directory which is dot output into the dots and i want to uh, check our main jar which is in mods main dot jar and over here now we have four files uh, this one is interesting summary dot dot uh, there is a diagram this is a explain diagram for the module graph we can copy that and if i go to the browser uh, there is one website not secured webgraphviz.com which is a tool where we can add our uh, graph diagram and we can generate our graph which is uh, very useful if we're trying to uh, if we're creating any documentation regarding our application or if you just want to visualize uh, the dependencies of our modules and uh, basically with that i am uh, finishing uh, the presentation I would like to thank you for the attention. I hope that you find it useful. And if you have time, I'm probably able to ask any questions if there are any. Uh, yes, Yuri? Uh, so my first question, question uh, in this um, diagram summary, we see that it says like a java.base and in the parenthesis, it also says a java.base uh well, what is the meaning of uh, those parentheses and uh, duplication uh, do you know it 
Uh, you mean that the main is dependent on Java base, models is de dependent, and JSON is dependent on that. Is that the question? No, my, my question, uh, why does it say java.base, uh, uh, space, uh, parentheses, and uh, java.base again? Like... Uh, because that's how it was generated, because of this. I believe if I delete that, this like the name of the module, and it comes from the jdips. I mean, uh, this is because uh, these modules are part of the JDK, and it has like... Uh, name and description of the packages. If I delete this here from the name, the visualization should be without it. Please, thank you. Uh, I have uh, one more question. Uh, how uh, uh, how does module uh, can, uh, can help us uh, resolve dependency conflicts? Let's say when uh, one uh, jar depends on uh, another jar of uh, of version, let's say one, and there is another jar that depends on the same jar, but with version uh, two, uh, because as I see it, modules uh, they don't show versions, right? Yes, they're not showing versions, but uh, uh, the other module, uh, like uh, using the module info the Java. Uh, is uh, giving exports this uh, module to uh, the other. So uh, if we have two jars using the same library with di uh, different versions, I believe that's the question. Uh, one of the jars will use the right version and the other jar will not uh, uh, have access uh, to this uh, other version of the library because the module will require the right version from that. Uh, it help, it uh, eliminates the, uh, the shadowing from the class path this way, because we have the exports directive and it will be using the right library. Okay, thank you. And as the last question, uh from the build tool perspective like maven or gradle uh does we need uh, do we need to change anything about uh, our uh, build configurations when you use uh, modules well uh like uh, basically no and uh, the thing is there that uh, uh, as i mentioned the automatic module part uh, when we add uh, libraries to our application everything will be added to the automatic module. Uh, it comes from default. Uh, maybe sometimes if you don't want to use the whole library, you can create a module from this library the same way I did uh, for the JSON library. This way you only use or export certain packages uh, from this library and this way uh, our application will be smaller. But uh, it's you don't need to change uh, anything uh, in Maven or most uh, tools and IntelliJs. I know they are making all this by default when you create the root module. Uh, 